Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall tell the great grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. 
They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son his, has the Son his life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving power among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph, to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Well, it really doesn't do any good to sugarcoat things. Some of Jesus' farewell words to his disciples can sound downright laughable within the context of the 2,000 years that have passed since they were spoken. The chapters in John's Gospel immediately preceding the Passion story are a long discourse interspersed with prayer that Jesus offers to his friends as he prepares to depart for the heavenly places. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. 
This is one such prayer. On this Sunday after Ascension Day, but before Pentecost, our attention is turned decisively to Jesus' departure and to words such as these. But sometimes these words can seem like a cruel joke. That they may be one? The church has fractured hundreds, perhaps thousands of times since this prayer was uttered. And while it may be a little less ostensibly religious these days, humanity continues to fracture just about everywhere we look. But hope is not lost. There's an important distinction we can draw. And if we do it successfully, perhaps Jesus' fervent prayer for unity can ring true after all. I'm going to introduce two terms. One of them, at least, you surely already know but I may be using it in a somewhat different way than you're used to. The two terms are religion and religiosity. Now these two words obviously have a common root, but their meanings are radically different. Religiosity is adherence to a set of concrete propositions about divine things. It's rigid belief in the sort of doctrine that can be captured in legalistic writing. It's measurable, and it involves lots of yes or no propositions. Religion, however, is a way of life. It's a way of life rooted in relationship with God and with God's other creatures. It is what the earliest disciples called the way before a term such as Christianity even existed. Now there is of course some overlap between religion and religiosity. No faith assembly, including ours, is completely free of doctrine, nor should we necessarily be. The most obvious example in our midst is the outline of the faith known as either the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed that we speak at nearly every worship service. But it's our relationship with this doctrine that makes all the difference. If the creeds are just a checklist of propositions we need to believe adequately in order to call ourselves legitimate Christians, then we are living in the realm of religiosity. But this is clearly not their purpose. Why, if they were simply a checklist, would we prayerfully recite them week after week rather than just once and done? They are rather a framework within which to live a particular way of life, a context within which we can practice religion. A good way to understand this might be through an example from nature. Several years ago, I attended a clergy retreat in North Carolina. One afternoon, I stood alone among some trees near the retreat center. Some were alive and others were dead. At first glance, The dead ones seemed to be the stronger ones. 
The living ones were thin and supple, and they seemed to sway dangerously in the wind. The dead ones were more or less immobile and looked quite sturdy. But I knew full well that this is an illusion. In a strong enough wind, the dead ones would simply crack and fall down, while the living ones, even having received a significant battering, would ultimately survive and remain upright. Practicing religion is like being the living trees. It means holding doctrine not as a proposition that demands our assent, but as a framework within which to live an extraordinary way of life. It means trusting that when we pray, there is a living presence on the other end of that conversation. It means trusting that as we think, speak, and act, it is all occurring within the protection and guidance of a wise and loving spirit that is infinitely larger than us and all our human affairs. The image of the living tree is helpful here in so many ways. The flexibility of living trees isn't infinite. They know where their roots are, and staying connected to those roots is overwhelmingly their highest priority. And at some point, they reach the limit of how far they will bend, and then they return to their ground state with amazing vigor. But they are supple and giving and their first response to any stress or strain is to give a little ground. Now I say all this with the utmost empathy for the temptation to settle for religiosity. After all, it offers the allure of certainty and it's just plain easier. Religion is by far the most difficult path. Why? Because the work is never done. Religion is a practice in the same way that something that has become increasingly popular here in the West, that being yoga, is a practice. Yes, we can develop greater skill over time, but the day when practicing like a beginner is no longer necessary never comes. When we are practicing religion, the disciplines of participating in liturgy, receiving the sacraments, studying scripture, praying, and having fellowship with other pilgrims on the way, are ones to which we must continually apply ourselves over and over, from cradle to grave. And this is because those disciplines are not ends unto themselves, but rather means to an infinite end, that end being a strong relationship with God and with one another. The main reward of practicing religion, as opposed to religiosity, is obvious. We actually get what we came to church for. We get a living relationship with God and with God's creation. But there's a second reward, too. And that is that it creates a window of opportunity for Jesus' prayer for unity to actually come to fruition. The overwhelming majority of our schisms and our conflicts occur in the context of religiosity, whether that's obvious or not. And of course they do. 
when one static doctrine confronts another, there must be winners and losers. And ultimately, both sides usually lose. But when religion is what people are practicing, then something quite different occurs. Then there is a capacity for unresolved tension to remain while relationships still stay intact and even grow and thrive. There is an acknowledgement that the divine container within which our interactions are occurring is big enough to hold us and our tensions. And there is a clear-eyed understanding of when we have come upon one of those rare occasions when tension is, at least for a season, too much for our roots to bear. Jesus' prayer for unity in the days leading up to his departure is not only an appeal to God. It is an appeal to us. Be one as the Father and I are one, he pleads. He asks and expects us to take a very active role in God's reconciling work. And that role we can best fulfill when we practice religion and refuse to settle for religiosity. Our church does that very well, and I pray that we will do it more and more in the days to come. May God empower us to do just that.
Let us pray with joy to our risen Lord, saying, Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, we thank you for the church you have built here on earth to witness your, to your power and love. Thank you for the risen life you offer to all your faithful people. Today, we lift up to your blessing all people and assemblies who gather in the divine name. We remember especially the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Anglican Church of Korea. We remember also the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, and Trinity St. Peter's Church in San Francisco. In our local community, we remember before you the Shiva Vishnu Temple in Livermore. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, we thank you for the foretaste you offer in your resurrection of that day when every nation and people will live in perfect peace and harmony. Thank you for giving to all peoples, especially those in positions of public trust and power, a desire for that day and the will and means to help bring it about. We remember before you Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all those who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. Thank you for your guidance and providence over every nation and its leaders. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Thank you, risen Christ, for overcoming the world's troubles and fears. Thank you for keeping us focused on you and the power of your resurrection during this time of pandemic and all the challenges it brings. We remember before you today all those who care for others in body, mind, and spirit, especially all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, educators, and Brad O and Brad S. Thank you for pouring out your love and protection upon them and upon us all. Alleluia. Thank you, Thank risen, you risen Lord. Lord. Risen Christ, Thank you for gathering this congregation of St. Bartholomew's together in awe of you and affection for one another. Thank you for the blessings you pour out upon us together and individually. We remember before you today, especially these members in our congregation. We pray for Linda, Janice and Lee, Bob D and Carolyn O and these in military service for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Alleluia. Thank, Thank you, you, Risen, risen Lord. Lord. Thank you, Risen Lord, that even exalted at God's right hand, you are still our great physician. We thank you for the healing mercies you pour into the lives of all who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. We remember before you especially these who have requested our prayers. For Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Carol, Kathy, Chalopi M, Dave R, David, David Barb's friend, Don and Wendy, Doris, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava and Tamara, Gary and Kathy, Glennis, Geraldine, Helen, Umberto, Candida and family, Janice and Bravo, Joanne, Lee, Lisa B, 
Laura, Luke, Marion, Marge and family, Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, Michael E, Sylvia P, Steve W and children, Tamara S, Robert, Reverend Jennifer Nelson and family, the Sweeney, Rudolph, and Plemons families, the Herman family, the Purcell family, the Moon family, the Ruzika family, the Boer family, and the Montgomery family. We wish healing prayers for all of God's children who have gone missing. May you all be rescued and feel God's warm love for you. We also pray for the peoples of Israel and the Hamas, that they might find peace. And we wish congratulations to Sarah on her graduation with an MBA degree. Good luck. Alleluia. Thank you, Thank risen, you risen Lord. Lord. Thank you, risen Christ, that in bursting forth from the tomb, you have paved the way for all the departed to enjoy eternal life. We thank you especially for these, your servants, who have entered into your nearer presence. We pray for Clifford Willibus, for Jennifer R, for Sharon H, for Linda G, for John M, for Marie R, for Vern P, for Joan B, and for Elda M. We gratefully and joyfully await the day when they and we will rise with you to the life immortal. Alleluia. Thank, Thank you, you risen, risen Lord. Lord. And now, O risen Christ, with grateful hearts, we offer you thanks for all the blessings yet unspoken that you have given us. And we bring before you with hearts and voices all of our prayers and concerns. Let us now gather all the prayers of our hearts into one in the words of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have, you have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son 
that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.